What if I told you that raising your kids in your home country was the wrong idea? Imagine I told you that raising your kids in China a thousand miles away from home would be a good idea. How would that make you feel? Nervous? Well, it shouldn't, and it's what I have decided to do. And in this video, I will give you my five reasons why. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Harvey, and I make videos about living in China. This week, I'm making a video about why me and my partner have decided to raise our future children in China, where we live right now, instead of back home in a Western society like the UK or America. I've come to one of my favorite spots in the whole of Shanghai to make this video. Such a beautiful spot, isn't it? And luckily enough, it's one of those secret-ish spots in Shanghai that not many people know about. So I'm lucky enough to have a place like this where I can come down, make a video with a bit of privacy and think, especially on a nice day like today. Number one reason for our decision not to raise our kids in Western or American society and raise our kids in Chinese society instead is because it is a drug-free society. It has very, very strict punishments for drug-related crimes, as opposed to other societies around the world. It will give me peace of mind knowing that my kids can grow up in a society that has a strong emphasis of staying away from drugs and very, very harsh drug rules. Also, being able to raise them in a community that has the same values and attitudes towards drugs and drug issues. In many countries in the West, drugs are very, very prevalent, especially America. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen videos on Twitter or other social media platforms recently of the issues in America at the moment, but there are some cities, there are some streets that used to be very, very, very nice. Some neighborhoods that were, you know, some of the best in the world. And now you can't even walk down them without fear of stepping on a needle or getting mugged or robbed or even shot due to drug issues. Now, unfortunately, in many Western societies, Drugs have become normalized and even legalized in some places. America, for example, has been undergoing a so-called war on drugs for at least the past three, four, or even five decades. Just another example of a war in which they are losing. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen American society and American streets recently. Um, perhaps you've seen videos on Twitter or other social media, but it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. Democratic states in particular have legalized drugs and made what used to be drug crimes, they've decriminalized them. This has completely ruined societies and neighborhoods and streets and cities that used to be very, very pleasant indeed have now become war zones full of absolute filth. Difficult to look upon, to be honest. And unfortunately, this now seems to be spreading across the Atlantic to the UK, with Scotland now being the place with the highest drug-related deaths in the whole of Europe. That's not so far away from my own home. It's a complete shame, and instead of becoming tough on these issues, our politicians at home are instead campaigning to legalize and decriminalize drugs and drug-related offenses. In my opinion, this is the complete opposite thing to do. And having seen what has become of American society, I fear the worst. I fear that UK society is not far behind American society. And this is not a society that I wish to raise my children in. Okay, now reason number two. 
why I have chosen to raise my kids in China as opposed to Western society is because of social media and the internet. Social media and the internet are everywhere. Everyone uses them, every country has them. However, some countries use them better than others. And China is one example of one of the countries that uses it better than other countries. In American and British society, for example, it's normal for kids as young as 10 or 11 to have access to these social media websites and to the rest of the internet. Is this a good idea? Despite the minimum age to create an account on these platforms being 13 years old, which in my opinion is still far too young, many kids get an account at an earlier age. Now every time I open the Instagram or the Twitter app, not so much Instagram but Twitter, I am bombarded with images of pornographic images actually or people being stabbed or shot or violently hurt. Now Western society has rotted to such an extent that it's now seen as empowering for young girls instead of pursuing a career in law or finance or some other good field or being a doctor or even a housewife or anything like that. It's seen as empowering for them to make accounts on certain websites. Now whereas just a few years ago or a decade ago it was seen as empowering for a young girl to pursue a career, it's now seen as empowering for young girls to make an account on pornographic websites and to sell images of their bodies online. Western society has rotted to such an extent that this is now seen as normal and having an opinion that contradicts this or says that it's wrong is seen as being... Wow, it's not seen as good. Now is this content the type of content that I want my young children to be exposed to? No, of course not. I've been floating about Chinese social media for the past two years now and instead of all of this not so good material, instead it's replaced with educational content or inspiring content or actually interesting content. Any society that normalises exposure to this explicit content to children is not a society that I wish to be a part of. Now the sun has gone down and it's getting very very dark so I'll give you the further free reasons at home. Okay made it back home. Reason number three and another major aspect that attracted me to raising my children in China is of course the low crime rate. Now compared to most other countries around the world that I have personally visited or researched, I would feel much, much safer walking the streets with my future family here in China as opposed to anywhere else, especially not the UK. For those who are watching this video on Bilibili and haven't yet travelled to the West, you may hear how safe China is all the time and not actually realise the extent to which this is actually true. Well, just take London or Paris or any other major European capital or Western capital as an example. These places have been romanticised through Western propaganda, films and television for their rich history and as places that people dream of living and visiting. And yes, these places used to be held by Europeans as being in high regard. But unfortunately, in recent decades, this has changed. And these places are now crumbling. London is the stabbing capital of the world. Kids walk the streets of London with machetes and butcher's knives this long, even longer, tucked into their underwear. People are afraid to travel on public transport in case they get randomly attacked. Even if people do get attacked, no one dares to try and help the innocent anymore in case they get wrongly prosecuted, which has happened multiple times in just the last year alone. People have to avoid wearing watches when walking down the street in London in case they get mugged. Now compare this to China and a place like Shanghai. 
the strong law enforcement presence and community-based security measures contribute to a sense of safety that is hard to match. Kids walk and play on the streets without their parents being scared for their safety. Women can walk the streets at night without being scared for their safety. Now, maybe you are from the West, like I am, and watching this thinking, I'm exaggerating my points. Well, I challenge you to ask any girl you know that lives in London whether she would feel comfortable walking the street alone after 10 p.m. or when the sun has gone down. I guarantee you she will say no. Knowing that my children can play and explore outside without having constant worry is a huge advantage that China offers and it will allow them to have a carefree childhood. Reason number four is family values. Now, in the West, it is encouraged and it's normal to move out of the family home at 18 years old, go off and fend for yourself and do your own thing. It's also normal for grandparents to go and live in a care home when they become ill, surrounded by strangers they don't know, in a place that is not their home, far, far away from their family. For many parents and grandparents, they die in these homes, oftentimes alone. For me, that's very sad. Would you want your parents or grandparents to die alone in a care home with nobody by their side? Now, I appreciate the strong family values in Chinese culture, where grandparents often live with the family, providing support and a strong sense of connection. This close-knit family structure offers a support system that can positively impact kids' emotional development. Finally now, number five, and that is growth and stability. China's rapid economic growth and its global trajectory have been nothing short of remarkable. The government have taken China from being a developing country to one of the strongest and most advanced countries in the whole entire world. The UK, on the other hand, hasn't grown at all within the same time frame. Salaries and wages have stagnated. House prices have exploded. The cost of living is rising dramatically, and public sector workers that the country depends on, like teachers, nurses, doctors, they're being underpaid and are forced to work extreme hours, leading them to go on strike all the time and refuse to work or even drive their ambulances to the hospital. Not only that, but the UK has had five prime ministers in the last seven years. That's not a joke. How can anything be accomplished if every year there's a new leader with a different set of objectives and priorities? Whereas China can create a five-year plan, carry out their objectives and improve society, the UK can't even fix the potholes in the roads. As a parent, I want my kids to have opportunities in a stable and prosperous society. China's GDP growth, increasing influence on the world stage and decisive leadership make it the perfect place to raise a family. The country's commitment to innovation and development ensures that my children will be part of a forward-thinking and globally relevant environment. Now, in conclusion, I love my home country and I always will. I'm very patriotic and I miss my home. But I don't like the direction in which it is heading. China's drug-free society, low crime rate, strong family values, economic growth and progress, and excellent form of government are all crucial factors that are leading me to this choice. It's a decision that combines safety, cultural values, and a bright future for my family. As a foreign British guy, my experiences living in China have been eye-opening. And whilst it might be a different journey than what I originally envisioned, I believe it's the right path for my future children's well-being and growth. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Also, follow me on, on Instagram where I post daily updates about my life in China. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.